Many of the remaining survivors of the Holocaust feel strongly about sharing their stories so this important history isn't lost. George Cronenberg is one of those survivors. He joins us today to share his personal experience and will also have information about an event where another story will be shared. So, George, welcome to our show. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. And we are happy to have you. Thank you. Uh, you were just a child when all this occurred, so what do you remember? Well, I remember the child coming from a very small town called Warburg in Germany, which in, that's Westphalia, which you might compare to Ohio. And there I lived with my parents, and I have a twin sister. And uh, we were very sheltered. We really didn't know what was happening in Germany, although I did see the Nazis in their armored cars, motorcycles, go up and down the street. And I thought this was just a normal way of life. Oh, boy. And, uh, but until um, the uh, 9th and 10th of November, 1938, Kristallnacht, that is the night of the broken glass, when the Nazis came into um, Jewish homes and stores, broke all the windows. And at that time, my mother was on a vacation visiting my grandmother who lived in Hanover. So my sister, my dad, and I, we were home alone. And during the night, they came and broke all the windows, glass, all over the place. And then in the morning, the Nazis came to arrest my dad. And uh, in this building, which originally was a Jewish school, uh, was uh, transformed into three apartments because uh, Hitler closed all Jewish schools. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we went to uh, the uh, rabbi that lived on the second floor that morning. By noontime, the Nazis allowed my dad to come back home, which was kind of unusual because when they arrested Jewish men, they usually sent him immediately to concentration camps, but they allowed him to come home. He decided at, at that point that we should uh, go and visit where my mother was visiting my grandmother, which we did. We took a train and went to Hanover in Germany, of course, and there we stayed a few days. After that, we came back home and uh, we found our apartment completely destroyed. In mm. other words, every piece of furniture, everything was smashed to smithereens and anything my parents had of value was stolen. So once again, we couldn't stay there either. You ended up going to England, right? Well, that came a little bit later, yes. It was um, uh, in December of uh, 38 that, uh, well, actually, it happened a little bit before that. England and Germany got together, and Germany allowed 10,000 children, just children, without their parents to go to England. So um, my parents told us, that we were going to go on a vacation because children just don't leave their parents just like that. Of course. You know? And so they told us we're going to go to England and we're going to, like a vacation, they would follow shortly afterwards. And that's how we went. My mother packed a small suitcase. We couldn't take anything of value. And uh, so we went from Hamburg, actually. We left from Hamburg by train going through Holland. In Holland, we boarded a ship to England. And once we arrived in England, um, we were housed in something that looked like, looked like an army camp, small huts, large holes where we had meals, and so forth. And the British people used to come on weekends and used to pick up certain children that they would take into their homes. My sister and I didn't want that because we were sure our parents were going to come. Of course, yeah. You know, they, and so, the, you know, but that didn't happen. And uh, I was moved from one hostel to another. And uh, actually, I, um, when we arrived there, they sent me to a boarding school. That's where I learned the English language. And then, of course, in 1939, September, the war broke out between England and Germany. And um, all the kids mm -hmm. were evacuated uh, away from the coast, uh, because I lived in a place called Margate, which was on the southeast corner of England. And uh, we were sent inland. And, but I hate to cut you off. Yes, of but course. We don't have enough time. I wish we did. There's so much more to your story. Well, I so. could go forever. Ever. <laughs> I wish you could, <laughs> but we can't. I understand. But we do want to make sure our viewers know about an upcoming event on April 26, featuring another Holocaust survivor. And that information is coming up next. Again, our thanks to George for helping to make sure his story and that time in history is never forgotten. We're glad you made it to America eventually. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> Happy to be here. Thanks. To register for or learn more about the special presentation, Face to Face with Holocaust Survivor Nina Frankel, Caring for Holocaust Survivors and Their Children with Sensitivity, email shalom at 
ohiosenorcare.net.